This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence. Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today's video is going to be my long-awaited favourite fantasy books of all time. Now I kept putting off filming this video because fantasy is my favourite genre, I care about it very very much and every time I went to film this video I would think no there's this book I'm waiting to read and I think that book's gonna be a favourite and I think this book is gonna be a favourite so I just kept putting it off in anticipation of books that I thought would end up on this list but at this point it's been like two years that I've been waiting to film this fantasy favorites video so I'm just gonna bite the bullet film it today so on this list today I do have 12 books I want to share with you no it's not 10 it's not a nice logical number there are 12 books I want to share because I couldn't round it down to 10 I also imposed on myself a rule that I was only allowed to include one book from each author on this list and then also broke that rule too anyway let's just jump straight into the video and without further ado here are my favorite fantasy books of all time the very first book on this list is The Lonely Castle in the Mirror by Mizuki Tsujimura. This is a book that I read reasonably recently and it is a YA novel set in Tokyo that's essentially a magical realism book about these six teenagers who are pulled through their bedroom mirrors into a secondary world into this beautiful magical lonely castle where they are told by a girl wearing a wolf mask that they have to find the wishing key in this castle so that they can have their wish come true. They're all around the ages of 14 and none of them go to school. There are a lot of themes in this book around friendship and bullying and community. Okay so I should probably say that not every book on this list is going to be strictly high fantasy. This is one of the magical realism books on this list. As I said it's set in Tokyo between the sort of normal everyday suburban life of Tokyo and this very magical castle which is very much drawing from fairy tales and folklore. If you like Alice in Wonderland I definitely recommend this book. Honestly my favorite part about this book was the ending. I thought it ended really beautifully and I really loved the fundamental story of this book. Book number Number 11 on this list is The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. To me it very much feels like an adult book but it kind of reads like a middle grade story in like several different ways anyway. Basically a Pixar film in a book. It is about a man named Linus Baker who is a caseworker for the department in charge of magical youth. I think that's the first time I've said the whole name without screwing it up. Basically Linus's job is to go out to all of these different orphanages in which the magical youth of this world are contained and segregated from society. His job is to inspect all of these orphanages and make sure that they're up to scratch and that they don't need to be shut down. He finds his job incredibly depressing and the start of the book is very grey and sad and dismal and then he eventually gets this case to go out to the titular house in the Cerulean Sea. He gets on the train and all of a sudden he's pulled through to this very magical natural world where he meets these six children and their caretaker. I cried because it was so very cute and I also cried because it was really emotional and sad. I felt so attached to Linus as a character. I felt like he was incredibly vulnerable and very 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 believable and I loved his character so much. I just thought that this book had such a wonderful message to it and I really loved the themes of fatherly love. It was so cute and so magical and very whimsical. If you're looking for a cute cozy book to read I definitely recommend this book. I love it to absolute pieces. Book number 10 on this list is Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. You would be very familiar with this if you watched the recent Netflix show Shadow and Bone. This is a book which is essentially a fantasy heist story. So we have our main character whose name is is Kaz Brecker and basically he's like this baby mob boss he's like looking after a gang he gets together this group of six people hence six of crows and their plan is to commit a heist most of the story is set in a like fantasy version of Amsterdam called Ketterdam I think this is a really really fun YA fantasy story book number nine on this list is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss our main character for this book is called Quoth Kvothe. Every time, every time I get stuck on his name, it's spelled K-V-O-T-H-E. The story is essentially a fantasy Bildungsroman about Kvothe's life and how he became this really amazing, talented wizard. This is a series. Currently the series is unfinished, but this is the first section of his story. I love the writing of this book. I love the world building of this book. I think that the magic systems are really cool here. I really loved the like magical university setting and like the cool, dark, interesting fantasy city setting that this has as well. This book honestly as much as I love it, as much as I think that it is genuinely so brilliant, would be higher on this list if it had 
interesting female characters in it. There's like one female character and she's a love interest and that's basically her whole shtick. She doesn't have any friends and she's one of those women that other women hate for no reason anyway. This book would be higher on the list if there was less of that and more interesting female characters but regardless I think it's an amazingly written story. I love the aesthetic of it. I love the world. I love the writing. Before we move on to the next book on this list I just wanted to thank the sponsor of this video which is Squarespace. Squarespace is a website builder, which allows people to create beautiful and dynamic websites with ease. I've been using Squarespace for almost a whole year now, and I really love their platform. There's a wide range of templates to choose from, and it was so easy to get my site looking exactly how I wanted. I couldn't be happier with how it turned out. Squarespace has heaps of benefits to it, from powerful blogging tools which help you to schedule and share posts, to analytics features which give you insight into the people who are visiting your site. Squarespace makes it easy to connect with the people who are interested in the things that you make. If you're looking to make a website, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Jones to save 10% off your purchase of a website or domain. The very next book on this list is His Dark Materials by Philip Pullman. This is a story that I wish I had have read so much earlier. For Northern Lights, we kick off the story with Lyra. She is living in Oxford with all of these scholars. She is this very loud little girl who always wants to play and have fun and make mischief and all of that kind of stuff. And she has a demon whose name is Pantalaimon. Now in this world, people's demons are kind of like extensions to their soul. They in some way embody some part of the person's personality. When you're a child, in this world, your demon can shapeshift, it can change into many different types of animals, and as you go through puberty and become an adult, your demon will settle down and become like a singular animal creature. And so one day, Lyra's best friend Roger is actually kidnapped by this group of people who take away children for some unknown and terrible reason, and she basically sets off on this adventure to go and find her friend. This is a really, really well written middle grade story. This book is so magical. I love all the different characters. I love the dialogue. I think the dialogue's really well written and interesting interesting, wonderful, wonderful world building. I loved Lyra's character. I thought she was very interesting and bold and charismatic. Book number seven on this list is Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman. I love this book so much. I need to stop saying that because I love all of the books on this list obviously. This is a story about a man named Richard who is from Scotland but lives in London. He has a fiance, he has a normal kind of boring nine to five job, but as he is on the way to this dinner with his fiance, a girl steps out of a door from nowhere and bumps into him and his life is irrevocably changed. This story is basically an allegory for homelessness. It's a story about the people who fall through the cracks. And so in this book we have the setting of London, which is our normal London, and then we also have the London underneath. So this is where the people who fall through the cracks go and it's this like much more sinister magical interesting place. I think this story is a wonderful love letter to London. It's kind of like a travelogue story. We're going to all of these different locations around London. After he bumps into the girl who stepped through the doorway from nowhere, Richard realizes that all of a sudden people cannot see him. He cannot use his credit card. His apartment gets re-rented to new people. He has no money. He has no ability to do anything. He turns up to go see his fiance. She cannot remember him. And so in order to try and fix his life, Richard Richard must then travel through London below and try and make everything go back to normal. Initially when I read this book I wasn't 100% blown away by it because I was wanting something a little bit more like the graveyard book or the ocean at the end of the lane but over time I think this book has really left like a resounding impact on me because I think it was just so unique and interesting and well written and a good fantasy story to read if you want something interesting and more contemporary but also very colourful and whimsical and beautifully painted. Okay moving on to book number six on this list and it is The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. As I said at the beginning of the video, I wanted to avoid adding an author more than once to this list. However, I love The Ocean at the End of the Lane and Neverwhere so very much each, and I love them in different ways because they're both very different books. So for that reason, they're justified in taking up two separate spots on this list of my 12 favorite fantasy books of all time. Anyway, The Ocean at the End of the Lane is about a man who goes back to visit his childhood home. He starts to remember all of these weird things that happened to him when he was a child. He remembers the young girl who lived next door to him whose name was Letty who believed that the pond next to the house was as big as the ocean. And so we go back into his flashback to his seven-year-old self who then begins to tell the tale as it happens. The impetus of this story really kicking off is the fact that they had this lodger staying in their house when the main character was seven who committed suicide in the family car. And from that very dark and upsetting event, weird and strange and unsettling things start happening. The thing that's really cool about this 
book is that we're seeing all of these sort of scary and adult things happening through the eyes of a seven-year-old narrator. So we're seeing the perspective of a seven-year-old who's trying to perceive all of these things they fundamentally don't understand. And so it's a really interesting, beautifully written short little book. And it sort of feels like, to me at least, like a really quite dark version of the Graveyard book, which is also another one of my favorite books. Honestly, why isn't the Graveyard book on this list? In my brain, that book sort of more securely falls under a middle grade category, even though that book also has fantastic, you know what, fuck it. Where is it? Here we go. We have the Graveyard book. I'm just gonna pop this on this list as like number 6.1. This is another Neil Gaiman book that I absolutely adore. Yes, it has fantastical elements. It's about a young boy whose family is murdered and as a toddler sort of like escapes this horrible murder happening, runs off up the hill to the local graveyard and the ghosts of the graveyard take him in and raise him. Again, this one is a middle grade book and in my brain sits more securely in the middle grade category rather than the fantasy fantasy category, even though there's a bunch of middle grade books on this list anyway. Okay, Graveyard Book is another one of my favorite books. This is now my 13 favorite fantasy books of all time. Number five on this list is The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. This is a large book. This is a large tome of a book. Although despite being the physically largest book on this list is not the largest book on this list in terms of its word count. This book is only 200,000 words. It just seems a lot longer. It's told from four different perspectives. So we have Eid, Loth, Tanay, and Nicholas. It is a beautiful high fantasy retelling of the myth of St. George and the dragon. We have this young woman whose name is Eid. She's essentially a sorceress in hiding, who's one of the ladies in waiting to the queen, laying in wait to protect the queen in case any of the dragons rise up and try to attack her. This book is so much larger and grander than that, but that's sort of like the best way I can describe the start of the story. It is a beautifully woven book. Like the world building in this story is so amazing. It feels like a really massive, enormous, and painstakingly woven world. Like it feels like the author has spent so much time building up this world. I think this one is actually a post-medieval setting, but it very much feels like a medieval setting. And because there's just so much attention to detail, I think that's the main reason why it gets compared to Tolkien. There's a lot of really beautiful imagery, especially around the dragons. And honestly, it is so beautiful. It's such a well-told story. It's a wonderful standalone fantasy story, and I think it is just so very excellent. Okay, it has just started raining outside and it's getting quite dark in here. So if it starts getting stormy and loud, I am sorry. Let's just hope that it adds to the coziness of this video. My next book on this list is Knights of the Circus by Angela Carter. It is about a young woman whose name is Feathers. She is this brilliant, very, very tall, cockney, confident young woman. Really enjoy her character. She has these enormous wings on her back and with those wings, she ends up becoming an aerialist in the circus. This story is set in I think it's 1899 and so it's sort of like has like an older feeling to it and so with this book we see the experiences of Feathers as she like navigates her life and joins the circus and has all of these like really remarkable adventures. There's a lot of very gothic creepy undertones to this book. I think it's a wonderful kind of darker circus story. Of course because it's Angela Carter there's going to be a lot of like gothic themes here but I just think it's such a beautiful unique magical story. Book number three on this list is the fifth season in series by N.K. Jemisin, which isn't a book but is actually a series. But anyway, I listened to the audiobook versions of this and I loved every single little second of this book series. I think that this is one of the most, again I'm using the word unique so much, but I think it's a really, really unique story. I think the world building is absolutely amazing in this series. The story is so unapologetically itself, like it's a fantasy book but it also kind of falls into the genre of like dystopia and science fiction. It's like like it's so many things this series. I love it so very much. So the first book follows three different perspectives and we kick off with Essen. We're in a world where there's a lot of seismic activity. A massive earthquake has just happened. The world is basically about to end but Essen doesn't care about any of that because she's just come home to find out that her son has been murdered and her daughter has been kidnapped. So Essen sets off on this big journey to go and find her daughter. There's a really amazing magic system to it. I really love the characters in this book. You can really tell that N.K. Jemisin has a background in psychology because 
because all of the characters are really wonderfully fleshed out. They feel so believable. They're all flawed and dynamic and intriguing and they genuinely feel like real people. And so yes, I really love the characters of this story. I loved the plot overall. There were so many like mysterious little elements in here and I felt so engaged by the story the whole way through. So good and I cannot say enough how much I love the fifth season series by N.K. Jemisin. Okay, moving down to number two and this is the point where I should probably say that for most of you who watch a lot of my videos you're gonna know that my favorite book series of all time is Harry Potter. It's a really really fundamental book to me. It's the reason why I got into reading. It's the reason why I got into creative writing. It is always going to be there. So I've decided that Harry Potter can have the spot of book number zero because I feel like it's cheating to have Harry Potter as book number one because I feel like it's just like nothing can ever topple Harry Potter. So yes, I am gonna let you guys know that actually Harry Potter is in spot zero. So moving on to the last two books of this list, there is still some form of suspense. Book number two on this list is Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell by Susan, no, by Susanna Clark, which I read really recently in a reading vlog. This book is such a tome. It is such a very large book. I know that I spoke about that at length in that vlog because this is 280,000 words. It's a very long book and somehow I read it in less than two weeks which is just remarkable for me. This is a story about two men, two magicians back in like Regency era England so around the time that like Pride and Prejudice is set who want to bring magic back to England. So this is kind of like an alternative universe in which magic exists. We see the period through like the Napoleonic Wars. This is sort of set over a time frame of about 10 or 15 ish years and it was just such a beautifully written story. I love this so very much. I think the thing that bumps this so far up the list for me is the fact that I really really love English and British folklore. Like I'm really interested in like like really old fairy tales and like fairy stories and stuff like that and so the fact that this leveraged so heavily on fairies and like sort of like the dark folklore of fairies and like the fairy roads and stuff like that I found it really really cool and how the fairy are actually linked to magic in this story I think is amazing. I love this so much like I love the like mildly dark vibe of this story. I love that there's such a big focus on like the academia of magic and the studying of magic. And I really enjoyed both the characters of Mr. Norell and Jonathan Strange. Um, they're very different from each other. Mr. Norell is this sort of like stuffy uptight gentleman while Jonathan Strange is much younger and a lot more like bold and confident. Again I promised myself I wouldn't have more than one book on this list by the same author but I do really also love Piranesi. Okay you know what you know what this is now a video where <laughs> it's actually my 14 <laughs> favorite <laughs> fantasy books of all time. Piranesi is also a wonderful amazing fantasy well like fantastical speculative story which surrounds the main character whose name is Piranesi who is trapped in this house that contains the ocean. Uh, Piranesi believes that the house is the entire world. The house is very labyrinthine there's lots of old statues all over the house and like the tiles come in and out and there's one other person in the house called the other and there's this like really cool and amazing mystery behind this story. There's a lot of references to C.S. Lewis in here. I genuinely love these both like these are both two of my favorite books of all time um, but you know what screw it they can both go on this list. I love this book if you're too intimidated by 280,000 words worth of Susanna Clarke maybe try out Piranesi. It's a very different vibe but it is a lot shorter. And now moving on to the very last book of this list. Can you guys guess what it is? Probably a very very obvious one but it is Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones. So aside from Harry Potter, again Harry Potter sits at place zero. This is a book that I read way later than I'd like to admit. Like I absolutely adored the Ghibli film for so many years. The first time I watched that movie I was like 14 and it was one of my favorite movies for such a long time. But when we were living in Tokyo I actually ended up buying this book from one of our like local bookstores in Shinjuku and I still have the little sticker on the back. I just genuinely love this book so much. I love the vibe of it. The aesthetic of this, the way she builds her world, her magic systems and all that kind of stuff. I just love it so very much. Like I love the way she does magic. I love the way she does witchcraft and it just makes me so very happy. Like her stories are so imaginative and interesting. And one of my favorite parts of this book actually is something that's quite different from the Ghibli movie. Hal and Sophie bicker all the time. Like I love their relationship in this book because it's just 
them arguing with each other basically the whole way through. Like they clash constantly and it's so much fun and it just makes their relationship seem even more wholesome and believable. I should say in case you haven't watched the Ghibli film or in case you haven't read this book, um, the plot of this story is that Sophie Hatter is the eldest of three in a land called Ingari. So in this place it's very very bad luck to be the eldest of three. It's very difficult to go off and earn your fortune and so Sophie has a bit of bad luck. She ends up working in the hat shop that her dad owned and so one day the Witch of the Waste actually comes into her hat shop. Sophie, not realizing that she's accidentally insulted the Witch of the Waste, um, gets turned into an old woman and one of the conditions of her curse is that she cannot tell anyone that she is cursed. She ends up wandering out to the Wastes where she stumbles across a moving castle and she becomes the cleaning lady to this moving castle where she meets a flamboyant and selfish wizard named Hal, whom I love very, very, very much. The story is just so wonderful and wholesome and imaginative. I reread this book all the time. It's a middle grade story. It's a very, very quick read. And I just, I love it so very much. And it is my favorite fantasy book at spot number one on this list of my favorite fantasy books of all time. So we added the graveyard book and then I think we ended up adding Piranesi as well. In the end, there were 14 books on this list that was supposed to only be 10 books, but I am a mess. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so very much to everyone over on Patreon for supporting my channel. If you'd like to check out Patreon, I do a lot of things like writing updates, behind the scenes content, bonus videos, our monthly book club, stuff like that. If you'd like to check it out, there's a link in the description down below. Take care guys, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.